Today I want to tackle a question that an incredible amount of betrayed spouses ask me and just struggle with. And that's just the question of what about the unfaithful spouse? Do they just get away with it? Do they just get over on us and get to live this happy life after they have made us, the betrayed spouse, suffer miserably? Uh, a lot of times the betrayed spouses will think, well, they're not suffering. I don't see them suffering, and I'm over here in complete misery. And I, I just want to tell you that we absolutely do suffer. We absolutely may not be communicating it, but uh, I was devastated. I was absolutely suffering. Just yesterday, somebody yelled at me, what about them? Are they suffering? And so I want to give you three quick points to kind of keep in mind. Number one, for the betrayed to heal, you're going to have to understand that the roadmap for you is forgiveness. Because you're going to have to give up the desire for revenge. If you believe in God, I want to just tell you today, I promise you, the Bible is true when it says that you're going to have to leave room for the vengeance of God. God will deal with your spouse. I promise you, and I'll prove it to you in a little bit. If you don't believe in God, then I want you to be able to understand that your spouse is probably not a sociopath, and he's probably or she's probably not just this person that doesn't feel at all. They may be portraying it that way, but I promise you, Life has a way of coming full circle, and I'll tell you a story in a little bit that we'll kind of share with you that you may not believe in God and, and all of that, and I understand, but I want to tell you they're not just going to get away scot-free. They're going to have their own suffering and their own accountability to the hurt they've inflicted upon you. So your way out, betrayed spouses, is forgiveness. I want to read you a quote I found this morning and it kind of gave me confirmation that what I was going to talk about today was something worth sharing with you. Tim Keller says this, we have to release the urge to exact payment from the other and make them hurt how we hurt and feel what we feel if we truly want to forgive. So you're going to have to understand that forgiveness is paramount for your journey. Number two, um, the unfaithful don't just get off easy without suffering. I'll never forget, there's a very popular uh, Christian artist right now. Uh, he's had a, a number of number one songs and all of that, but we were in the ministry together years ago. And he wasn't who he is now. And I was high and mighty, big shot, big pastor, big traveling evangelist type guy. I, was so important in my own world. I was on the front page of my own paper. But at any rate, we were at this conference and I was kind of running a, a administratively a part of the stage and all of that and I told him, when the song is over, don't do this, do this. Well, he didn't. So after it was over, you know, five or 10,000 people are kind of moving away. I took him aside and just ripped him apart. I said, when I ask you to do something, you do it. Let me just tell you something. You need to understand that I am asking you to do something, and when we have this big presentation going on, you're going to do it. And he just kind of looked at me like, okay. And another incredibly popular artist was next to him, and he just kind of said, okay, man, we got it. We get it. So I walked away like, yeah. And that just didn't go well. Four years later or so, okay. I'm in the middle of rural East Texas, and I am driving around trying to find this address because I'm selling real estate. I literally have almost just hit a cow. I'm having a terrible day. I can't find this address because I'm in farms and you know all of that kind of rural area. And his song comes on, and it is a number one song, and the, the DJ on the radio is just another number one song for this artist, and he's just killing it, and he's on tour, and he, all these things. And I just sat here, and I just pulled over and was like, 
I felt like, and I don't know how old you are, but there was this uh, program on VH1 that was called Where Are They Now? And I felt like I just sat here in this Where Are They Now moment. Here's this guy, big prideful me, had taken him to the woodshed. And now he's on um, you know, all the secular and Christian radio stations. And he has blown it open. And I am sitting here lost in, this, in the middle of nowhere and I just start to weep and cry at what my life had become. And I just, I had so many moments like that. It was humiliating. Was I in front of a thousand people being whipped and stoned? No. But was I humiliated internally? Absolutely. That moment and several other moments like that changed my life. I'll never forget, I pulled over. There was cows walking by me in the stable. This little uh, baby cow walked up and was super close to my little car and was sniffing around and I just looked at him and was like, I'll never forget this moment. And I just cried and I just prayed and said, God, I never want to be that guy again. I never want to be how I was ever again. And I felt like the biggest failure, the biggest loser it's one thing if you've kind of never had that level of success, but to have that level of success and throw it away and now be just bankrupt with no money, no successful real estate momentum at all, your wife can't stand you uh, on you know, two or three days a week. I mean, I just was so hopeless. We the unfaithful have our moments of incredible shame and humiliation. I just want you to know, betrayed, we don't just get off easy. I'll tell you another story. When I was going and I was the man, I had all these friends. I, I mean, I was never alone. I had all these, you know, high-level NFL um, and Major League Baseball and all these different guys that I hung out with and texted with every day. I mean, I just was so surrounded by friends. I just felt like, yeah. And I'll never forget uh, I think I was about a year, maybe a year and a half out from disclosure, and I had taken a job at this real estate company. It was the same one with the cows. And I had no friends. I had one friend who stuck with me when everything fell, but that was it. Literally, it was Samantha and the kids and this one friend who lived in another state. And I'll never forget, I walked into this guy's office, and I had kind of picked up that he was a Christian and, and he was extremely successful. I mean, he was making several hundred thousand dollars a year. But I just, I kind of picked up on some cues and I, I went into his office and I sat down and I just said, hey man, so how's things? And good. And I said, hey, um, I don't have a lot of friends and you seem like someone I could relate to. Can I go to lunch with you or, or have breakfast with you? Um, I'm just kind of alone. And I just had this real humble moment. I was, I was literally asking for someone to be my friend. And there was so much mercy because for whatever reason, he sat behind his big, powerful desk, and was like, yeah, man, I'd love to. Let's get coffee tomorrow. And he ended up becoming one of my best friends. He really did. It was just really weird. And you want to talk about humiliation, asking someone to be your friend. So it's, and I have a million of these stories, and I hope to share them with you in this, this video blog, but I just want you to know, we don't just get away with murder and move on down the road. You just, and here's my third and final point, you the betrayed, you may not see it. The unfaithful may not be able to communicate it even. They may not be there yet. They will probably get there eventually. You may or may not see the humiliation, the struggle, the vengeance that you want to see, and you have to ask yourself, is asking for vengeance going to help you heal? Because I'll tell you, as Samantha genuinely wanted me to suffer, as Samantha genuinely wanted me to hurt, it only made things worse for her. 
It only complicated things. So I think as you let go of the desire for vengeance and grab hold of a, a new desire for forgiveness and mercy, I think that's when you are going to find your greatest freedom.